perfect timing. As Marco, say hello to everybody. Yay. So welcome to our final, I'm not going to call this a panel. I just want to kind of do a recap. I want to do a recap of the show. And i um, very fortunate. We're going to have a lot of different perspectives here, quite frankly. Uh, we have, uh, Carrie, I believe you're here with your journalist hat on. Uh, Pat, you are here with your research and anal industry research hat on. You are here with your vendor supply, ex side. supply side exhibitor hat on. And I am here, I don't know, what, regular. English industry regular. And I'm not really sure what I'm here as. Uh, community, what am I? A community organizer. organizer. I'm here as a community organizer. Yeah. So, um, Carrie, let's start with you. It, regardless of whether these companies were in my alliance or not, that's not what we're here. This is about. This is about a conversation. So, as a journalist, what are the stories that you think are important to tell after Graph Expo? And what is the story you're going to tell about Graph Expo? Well, I was hoping to learn from Pat so I'd know what to write. <laughs> No, you know, um, attendance is way down. That was expected. Uh, and, and NPES has, or GASC has been pretty pretty open about, about that. But what I've been hearing from people on the floor, the exhibitors on the floor, and, and uh, Paul and I talked about this a little bit earlier, is that the people that, there's two elements. The people that are coming here have a particular problem or set of problems in mind. I've got this problem. How are you going to help me fix it? Can you help me fix it? Here's what I need. And they're coming to see a limited number of people. I mean, they might walk around and see what else is new, but they're coming to see, they know who they want to see and they know what they want to find out. The other thing that I found pretty interesting is um, one of the major vendors here was saying that, you know, we've met, we've gotten a lot of new, brand new leads. These are people that wouldn't get on a plane and fly to Chicago. We didn't even know they existed. I never heard of this company before, and he's $25 million. So I think that's, I think they've been really pleased with that. Today, the last day of the show, is completely dead. Um, and so I saw people packing up as early as 11 o'clock this morning already. But, you know, um, Monday and Tuesday were pretty busy, and I think Sunday was, was too. So at the, there are some areas of improvement, and I think it's exciting that they have a new um, CEO or whatever his title is, Thayer Long, president. Um, I think he's open. I think he's he's open to listening um, and taking taking feedback. And, and so one of the things I'd like to see them do in the future, besides get rid of the name of print, I mean, let's stick with one show. I mean, let's not, you know, we don't need that. Uh, but what I'd like to see them do is put more emphasis on the educational content. Because if you think about uh, Seabold in the good old days or On Demand, it, they were organized around the educational aspect of the show, the conference, and I think that they could do a much better job of that. So I'd like to see that in the future. Well, just to mention, the education that went on in this booth was Massive. out of this world. Massive. There were people spilled into the aisles, almost every panel. We had applause for workflow panels. Applause. Oh, that's great. Um, so I agree with you, and anything I could do to help bring more people in. I mean, I know we have close to a thousand scans just for people listening to panels. So I agree with you. People see, uh, were seeking knowledge. I also agree uh, with something you just said because when I was speaking to my alliance partners when they came in for panels, they were all uh, echoing the same thing you said: um, less bodies, but new ones. Um, new, uh, which is something I knew. They were all going to come in here because they never get to go to Chicago because I'm one of those people that doesn't go to Chicago. The show has to be, you know, where I could get to it if they weren't sending me. So I'm really glad to hear that um, it is coming true. Pat? Alrighty. All right. Get out your, get, get out your notebook. Here we go. So, hi, I'm Pat McGrew from InfoTrends, and so this is uh, my return to the market research and, and uh, forecasting side of the, the industry from being on the supply side after 13 years. And the thing about this show is that it, in order to 
to decide to move. It's a big move to, to move from Chicago to Orlando. And so I came here with the expectation that the attendance would be uh, somewhat down from what we would normally see at the similar show in Chicago. Um, I, I know that some vendors chose not to come uh, because they felt that it wasn't worth the investment. And, and I think that they made mistakes. I think it was a, a big mistake if you decided to stay home this year because what you missed is what Carrie described. You missed the people who would not come to Chicago. You missed the people who were coming in and spending up to an hour in someone's booth learning about what they had to offer, learning about how, this, how things work, whether it's you know software and Solomar or Solomar. Software in Solomar's booth, uh, hardware in, in the uh, EFI or the Canon or the Xerox or the Rego booth or whoever's booth, if you, you miss the opportunity to meet those people, which means those people are not likely going to be buying from you. So as, as a, a learning, what I took away is that uh, every one of the hardware vendors who made the, the point to come and who made the point to, to bring equipment and show that equipment well, I think every one of them will benefit. And, and I learned new things here about how, what, where they're positioning their equipment. Every one of the major vendors is positioning towards packaging, and that was really exciting to hear because I think that's a big growth area. We saw a lot of software here, and we saw new software people here. And so if you were looking for a web to print solution for your business, or you're looking for color management, or you're looking for job scheduling or estimating, there were people here who could spend the time and tell you a story. And I think because the format was a little smaller than we normally see in Chicago, it was a little easier to access Software Row and, and the newspaper pavilion and, and the different pavilions. And so I, I think you got a lot of benefit out of it. But I think that the, the organizers of this show have got to rethink what happens going forward. So next year we go back to Chicago. I get that. And I know that there's a plan for us to come back to Orlando. But to be honest, we need a West Coast solution. We, we need this show to be moving. I, and I know it's painful, but we need it to be moving every year. We need, we need, so let's go Chicago. Let's go Orlando. Let's go San Diego or San Francisco. <laughs> San because, Diego. San Diego would not be bad because that will give us access to more of the people who need what this show can provide, including the education, certainly here in the Printerverse, and access to these vendors. Thanks so much, and I totally agree that um, you know the people that I have spoken to here would will never go to Chicago, and they were so happy that they had the opportunity to walk up to any of these alliance companies or any of the uh, companies out there and actually talk to them because they would have never been able to do that directly. They always have to do it through a you know a sales process, which is sometimes they just want to ask questions. They just want to kick the tires and they don't want to give a DNA sample and end up on some neat email <laughs> list and cold call list from hell that they can't get off of, you know? So um, I, I agree that a lot of companies that I'm friendly with made big, huge mistakes not coming here. And I warn them, I'm like, you're making a mistake. These are new people and they want to learn from you. Paul, so more. Yes, yeah, Solomar Systems out of San Diego, California. It would be great if there was a, a show there in our hometown. We always like to entertain folks in our neighborhood. So your original uh, ask was around, tell them what they should know about Graph Expo. So I, I did see um, some of the industry regulars. Um, I, I also uh, had the opportunity, I, I wear two hats when I come to these events. Uh, I also participated in Explorers Breakfast and uh, that was well attended as well with four great panelists. Uh, one of the things that I think is important, going back to the less bodies at the show, were the good bodies at the show. And I, I'm not just talking about um, fit people. I'm talking about the senior players that came on a mission to do something and did spend a long time in the booth. On Sunday I had five appointments scheduled which would have allowed me to have 
time for a bio break and a lunch and all that stuff. But unfortunately, never it never happened. I didn't, I didn't get to um, have a bite until about 3 o'clock in the afternoon, and then I was late for my meeting with you. Yeah. And, and, and all you had was the nuts. I just had some nuts and a coffee. It's all I could grab that fast. So that was fantastic. Um, and, and then it kind of petered off as we went. But I, I also had the opportunity to speak with a couple other uh, potential partners that I haven't had that time to speak with and spend some time with about how their solutions can uh, become part of the fold of our dashboard. Because as we were uh, discussed on another panel, there were a lot of individual dashboards in disparate databases that we've been culminating for a few years at Solomar, and I found a couple more out there. And uh, they're answering questions that I've heard from my customers and when I went up to their booth and said can you do this they said yes I said geez where were you three weeks ago when I was at my client so sometimes uh, the show is just as educational for me to have the answers before my clients ask me the question thanks so much what do you I mean now we're just having a conversation what do you think it is going to take to get, I mean, we, we just had a crazy convergence of trade shows all colliding into each other that, um, I mean, I've heard almost all of the exhibitors complaining about, quite frankly, in a, in a way that it's almost like they're going to round up a posse and go to the shows and say, you're going to have to consolidate. What is it actually going to take to make that happen, Carrie? I'm not going to mention any names because I don't know, you know, how. But I know that there was one major show that happened this fall that has said, "No, we don't want to cooperate with you," and another one that's saying, "Yeah, let's talk." And what I think is that if they do consolidate the shows, let's say it's a sign show, maybe or a packaging show, it has to be integrated. If they're going to have conference content, it has to apply. Because, you know, in the old days, you remember when On Demand and AIM were together, right, it was red, right. yeah. red and blue. Yeah. It was like bowling ball down the alley. Exactly. Yeah, it was like an election year, and one side's yeah. carpet had red carpet, and one side yeah. had blue carpet, and it was just yeah. like that. You know, it was terrible. You stuck exploring the mix of that, and you lost yes. us. Yeah. Yes. And um, and that people weren't happy. And so it and and there are a lot of vendors that cross those lines. Whether you are talking about signs or packaging or or whatever the other the other thing is, so they have to integrate it in a way that's meaningful, including the conference program. So, you know, I I mean, and the other thing you you think, well, do they really need the show every year? And what I liked about what you said, Deb, is. If people, if we moved it around, then I could see every year. Okay, so let's have a West Coast shows have never done well with a printing show. Let's just say it's in Vegas. That's close enough. Yeah. Um, sorry. Vegas does well. <laughs> yeah, Vegas does well. And then, you know, I mean, the first one I went to was in I've Philly. I've never been to Vegas. Oh, you lucky person. <laughs> it's probably a good thing. <laughs> yeah. So oh, the first one I ever went to was in Philly, you know, when they used to move it around. So, yeah. so maybe if they moved it around, yeah, that's... Yeah, Seabold, but that was, it was different. It was different, yeah. Um, so, I, you know, that's, that's an option is, you know, if they're going to, but otherwise, why don't we, you know, why don't we do it every other so, year? So, Kerry, just to, about getting the shows together, it's money, right? Everyone's got an agenda. Everyone's got a P&L on their own show, and they'll take the shrink and show and keep the profit levels where they need it to be until the buyers, the vendors, speak with our wallets and yeah. don't show up like you said they didn't show up here. Yeah. I think that's happening right now. Right. Yeah, yeah, it is. But then the other thing, I mean, so I know from having just come off the supply side that, you know, one of the challenges for us in a Drupa year, and you can't discount the Drupa factor, is that you blow your budget trying to take every piece of equipment you manufacture, every piece of software you manufacture, your bodies, the people to man it, the paying for hotels, paying for flights, paying for meals for, you know, basically two weeks in Germany. And, you know, if you're a hardware manufacturer, you're there for over a month. And then you say, oh, my God, so that's, you know, early summer. And now I still have to get through these other series of shows to get to the end of the year. And depending on when your fiscal year end is, this, this can be a really, really painful Something's thing to gotta do. Give. So in the end, you know, why have this show at necessarily in a Drupa year, why not have it the year after? 
So some vendors might say, oh, well, you know, the U.S. hasn't had a chance to see anything. Well, to be honest, if you spend two minutes on YouTube, a little bit of time on Facebook and follow Twitter, you, you can get an awful lot of what happened at Drupa, right? We were all broadcasting from Drupa, right? Pretty like regularly. Fire reports and, and, and read things. what they think. Yeah. Oh, oh my gosh, yes, read what they think. <laughs> and and read and read everything that's because there was an awful lot of good stuff. I mean, because Morton was covering it with Inkish TV. Uh, there you know, there was a lot of good trade coverage of Drupa. And this show could have happened next year and it would have been just fine, right? The world would not have come to an end. But then maybe you'd only do. No one died. That's exactly it. Thank you, Jeff Hazlett. No one died. <laughs> and and so in the end, maybe you only do it every other year, and maybe that inter maybe you do the pack the big packaging show, and then the next year you do the big commercial print show, and the next year you do the big something else. Because integration is is something that we prayed for when Aim and On Demand teamed up, and it got worse every year instead of better. From the people that are in my community who don't get to go to Drupa, they were really excited to come to this show because they could potentially see some of the technology that was shown there. The problem was that the vendors couldn't bring it because of all of the uh, conversions of the shows, especially with the ones uh, that the one that was just a few weeks ago, uh, pretty much eliminated half the equipment from, yeah. from coming here. Yeah. Also, um, I know that I was looking for someone to help me cut out my boards and we couldn't find a cutter on the floor, which is, which is telling of something. But what did the show do right this year? All right, so a couple of things. Um, the printerverse is at the front of the hall, not buried in the back, away from everything. Yeah, amen. And, and that was really important mm -hmm. because there's a lot of visibility on this aisle, a lot of visibility on this aisle. There's a big sign overhead, and frankly, that's really important. That the, the ability to come to a place to get educated where nobody's going to be selling to you because you're very clear about that. And that, that was a big difference for them that they, they said, yes, the printerverse should be in the front and it should be visible. I think that that made a big difference. I think that um, I know they did a lot to reach out to a lot of user groups and a, and a lot of other sort of industry associations to team up. Explore certainly has the Explore Breakfast. You know, Infotrends has their breakfast. There's, there are just so many different things going Which on. Which is well over 60. Yeah, I, they, it was a big long list. You'd almost be, if you tried to hit all of them, you, you'd never be able right. to do it. So I think that that was a good thing that they did. I, I think that there are, um, there, there's a lot of room for improvement, but to me, those are the two things that stand out. Thank you so much, Carrie. I, I'm going to say the same things, and you know, they've had the they've had the co-located events. I mean, they had more than 50 last year in Chicago, but I think you know uh, there were reasons why they weren't in Chicago. But trying this new venue, I think, was good, and I liked it because. It didn't seem like you had to walk as far, you know, and, and it was, it is smaller, but it was easy to get around the show floor, and, you know, it's, it's a nice center. It's a really nice center. It's convenient to all the hotels in the area, and, yeah, so I'd like to see them come back here. Yeah, I think <clears throat> just in my world, I was really happy to see museums thinking about software a little bit more. Um, uh, honestly, we put the word inkjet in our submission to get some attention, and we got it. But if we took that word out, would we have? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Yeah. It was an experiment, and it worked. But the, my point is, is that now people then went, oh, well, how do you work with this inkjet thing? Oh, and it's software that makes it better. And when you heard the inkjet vendors talking about it, they said, software is driving my printers, right? So I, I thought that that was uh, nice of them to do. And uh, we want to thank the Academy for that. Last question, then we'll wrap it up. My audience are the attendees. I'd like you to give everybody a reason at home to start saving now for the next print show and to attend it. Carrie? 
Um, first of all, I, I did I did have a chance to talk to Thayer Long, the president of GSC, last night, and he said that some of the companies that haven't been at the show for a while, they're already booking. They're already booking for Chicago. So I think we're going to see some, you know, more equipment and, and some of the people that we haven't seen for a while coming. Um, I also think that the four-year cycle of Drupa is one thing, but the pace of, of development is, is rapid. And one of the things we saw at Drupa, and I think we're going to see even more of, of here, is more collaboration among the vendors. You know, they're doing things together. And yeah, Xerox KBA, um, uh, uh, I was thinking Kamori and Konica Minolta. Let's Pitney throw some Bowles other names MCS. in there. You know. yeah, uh, yeah. I would like yeah. everywhere. And, and I mean, quite frankly, we created print projects with the partners here. We yeah. had uh, Muto. I mean, I mean, all these companies have contributed something in some way to something in the print of us mm -hmm. working together. Sure. And I think that we're going to see a better educational program. Not, not that it wasn't good here, but I mean, for the show as a whole, I believe that he heard that message, and we're going to see that. So I would really encourage people to come a to see, you know, especially in the software world, rapidly moving. They have to keep up with it, and b to you know to take advantage of the education. Thank you so much, Carrie. By the way, great restaurants in Chicago. There are great restaurants. Thank you so much, Carrie. And uh, I know you just keep popping by, and I keep throwing you on a panel. So thank you uh, very much for being such a willing participant, if, uh, if I can call you a participant versus a captive. But I really appreciate your time um, and your contributions to the industry and to the community. So thank you very much. Pat McGrew. All right, you 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 want to go you, any opportunity you have to get to a trade show, you should take it. So you should be looking out over the next 12, 18, 24 months to figure out what shows are out there that will help you learn to run your business better, to use the resources within your organization better. If you're an enterprise person or you're a commercial printer, it, it really doesn't matter. There are there's a show out there for you. For Graph Expo, if this is if you are watching this, you are probably interested in what get, goes on here, and to see all this great video that that Deb's been live streaming. I mean, this is a brilliant opportunity for you to learn, but it's not the same as being here and talking to people about your problems. So, you should be looking at making an investment in yourself. That's the most important thing that you can do. It took the so words right out of my mouth. If it means that you, you know, you you take 10% of your marketing budget and you you make sure that that stays set aside, or 15%, or depending on what your what numbers you're working with, and you set that aside and you say, this is my go to a trade show to get educated budget. I think that that's a really important thing to do. I I, I got nothing. No, but um, seriously, but I, I'm, that was a, a number one on my list w was education, and you know it's near and dear to my heart. I know what I know because I go to these. Yeah. People look at me, ask me, well, how'd you learn that? Where'd you learn that? Well, here, there, talking to someone. If I don't know the answer, I know someone on the planet who does. You've directed me to places, yeah. you know, and. Um, you know, you hang out with these girls who print and women of distinction. Yeah. It's a good thing. It is. Right? Yeah. All three Actually, I'm one too. All three of you. Yeah. Yeah. I think we're all so, but I, you know, the, everything we've ever invented is to simulate a face to face conversation, yeah. right? The phone, all the FaceTime, the videos, but, and it's irreplaceable um, to do these things and get deeper conversations. So, I, I, I think it's invaluable. I would just add to it that. Um, from what went on in this booth and from what I was able to help facilitate, human face-to-face -face networking, there is nothing better than it. I mean, some I am the intergalactic ambassador to the Printiverse and some people, I mean, I spent three years networking as a job, um, but there is nothing like saying, hey, I know just the person who you need to speak to, and there they are right there. Um, I know that I have helped partnerships form at this conference at the at Graph Expo, and if it's worth it to see some sessions, meet some people, um, learn some things, but most of all, look, meet and understand face to face who you want to do business with. 
a crafted, a well-crafted email is a wonderful thing. But meeting somebody and really understanding, I mean, a handshake, quite frankly, says a lot. You know, does someone have bad breath? I'm, I mean, I'm serious. It's crazy things like that. But do you want to, you know, end up really p partnering with these people? And it's you know, not it's something that you can do from a distance. It's so funny you say that, getting to know people. I, I met people who are who do things in their spare time that I never would have thought of, just volunteering in their communities, adopting children, teaching people things. Once you get to know these people, um, it changes how you work with them. And especially if you're an exhibitor and you're talking to people and you're talking to customers that you might not even know are your customers, you, you can strengthen your relationships by finding out this personal information about people. and. Uh, really, that's what the Printiverse is all about. So um, I know we're, we're talking about the context of the show, but um, we're going to pack up right now. So thank you, everybody. Quick shout out, Sandy Hubbard, thank you so much. Live stream Manning, social media Manning. Marco Morales, I don't know where you are, but I cannot wait to see the amazing photos that you've taken the entire show. Jen Grace has been running around the entire show on the Graph Expo account. If you don't if you've seen a tweet, if you've seen a video, if you've seen anything, Jennifer Grace has done it. She has done an amazing, amazing job, let alone she was running our accounts also, um, not our social media accounts because uh, Sandy was helping, but our client uh, social media accounts as well during the show. Josh Grace on the video camera has done everything. I mean, I, I, I honestly have not said two words to him, but good morning and good night, which is really monumental, quite frankly, when it comes to the video, because I live and die on that video camera. And shout out to Canon once again for loaning us that video camera. Last but certainly not least, the woman who birthed me, um, Lady Scanlot. Um, I know that I told Canon this morning that we had over 800 scans, and they were like, what? Do you, told you. do you have any idea how much we were up to? 900 now. All from that woman right there, Lady Scanlot, my mom, Harleen Satin, who is, by the way, Marco, I gave you a shout out. Uh, everyone says Polo every time we say that. Um, Single-handedly, if you come within three feet of my booth, my mother will bring you to the brochure. She will start telling you about everything that's going on in the booth. She's helping me do my PR. She tells me when I'm out of line. She tells me I'm not allowed to get involved with things. Uh, she's got it under control and really um, is runs this booth while I'm up here. So thank you, Mom. Thank you so much. Uh, I honestly share that girly award with you, so thank you so much. Uh, oh yeah, and I won the girly award. Holy God, that was crazy. Um, so thank you again. See you next year at Print 17, everybody. Bye. Print long and prosper. Yeah. Thank you so much. Do you have rocket ship pens? Carrie, did you get yeah. rocket ship pens? Oh, you know what, actually.